What if I told you that while everyone was watching OpenAI and NVIDIA announce their $100 billion partnership, Google quietly positioned itself to control the future of artificial intelligence? And the wildest part? Almost nobody noticed. Let me paint you a picture. Right now, the tech world is obsessed with the mega deals. Microsoft was the first of its kind, pouring nearly $14 billion into OpenAI. Amazon has dropped $8 billion on Anthropic. Oracle landed a mind-bending $300 billion cloud commitment with OpenAI, and so on. These are the headlines that dominate your feed, the partnerships that seem to define who wins and loses in AI. But here's what's actually happening. While these tech giants are fighting over today's champions, Google is systematically capturing tomorrow's winners, and they're doing it with a strategy so subtle, so elegantly executed, that it's reshaping the entire AI landscape right under our noses. Francis D'Souza, Google Cloud's chief operating officer, has a story he loves to tell in numbers. Nine out of the world's top 10 AI labs run on Google's infrastructure. The vast majority of generative AI unicorns use Google Cloud. 60% of all Gen AI startups worldwide have chosen Google as their cloud provider. And here's the kicker. Google Cloud has locked in $58 billion in new revenue commitments over just the next two years. That's more than double their current annual run rate. Think about that for a second. While everyone's watching the flashy partnerships, Google has quietly become the invisible infrastructure powering the entire AI revolution. But why does this matter? Why should you care that Google Cloud is signing up startups like Lovable and Windsurf, which you've probably never heard of unless you're deep into the AI world, instead of making splashy billion-dollar deals? Because Google understands something fundamental that its competitors are missing. The future of AI isn't going to be controlled by three or four massive labs. It's going to be built by hundreds, maybe thousands of specialized companies that don't even exist yet or are just getting started right now. Think about it like this. Microsoft bet big on OpenAI. Amazon bet big on Anthropic. These are smart bets on known quantities, on companies that have already proven themselves. They're not terrible bets in and of themselves. After all, Google has invested over $3 billion in Anthropic, but they're also incredibly concentrated risks. What happens if a startup in someone's garage right now is building the AI model that makes GPT-6 look like a calculator? What if the next breakthrough in AI doesn't come from a mega lab with thousands of researchers, but from a scrappy team of 10 people with a revolutionary idea? Google's answer is beautifully simple. Capture them all or at least as many as possible. Instead of putting all their chips on one or two horses, they're building the racetrack. They're offering AI startups $350,000 in cloud credits, access to their technical teams, and go-to-market support through their marketplace. They're providing a no-compromise AI stack from chips to models to apps. And critically, they're doing it with an approach that gives customers choice at every layer. But this is where it gets really interesting and where Google's strategy reveals its true genius. Google Cloud is simultaneously hosting OpenAI's infrastructure, running Anthropic's Claude through its Vertex AI platform, and competing against both with its own Gemini models. In other words, they're essentially the arms dealer selling weapons to both sides while fighting the war themselves. It's an incredibly delicate position that requires a lot of finesse, but it's also devastatingly effective. Because here's the thing, Every startup that builds on Google Cloud becomes, in some way, tied to Google's ecosystem. They're using Google's chips, Google's infrastructure, and Google's technical expertise. And when you're a startup going from zero to potentially billions in valuation in 18 months, which is entirely possible in today's AI gold rush, those relationships become incredibly sticky. You don't easily migrate your entire infrastructure when you're scaling at hyperspeed the switching costs become astronomical. Google's even taking this strategy to the next level with moves that barely made headlines. They're now placing their custom TPU chips in other cloud providers' data centers for the first time, including a deal with London-based Fluidstack that includes up to $3.2 billion in financial backing for a facility in New York. They're literally embedding their hardware into the competition's infrastructure. It's like planting sleeper agents throughout the entire industry. Now, you might be thinking, isn't this kind of monopolistic? Doesn't this give Google way too much power? 
And honestly, those are exactly the questions regulators are asking. Just this month, a federal judge delivered a ruling in the government's five-year antitrust case against Google's search monopoly, attempting to curb their dominance without hampering their AI ambitions. The concern is straightforward. Google could use the same tactics that made them dominant in search to control AI, leveraging their vast data advantages and market position to squeeze out competitors. But here's where Google's strategy reveals its true sophistication. By positioning itself as an open platform that empowers rather than controls the next generation of AI companies, they're essentially performing regulatory jujitsu. They're not buying up startups and killing competition like some tech giants might. They're not forcing exclusivity deals. They're providing infrastructure and letting a thousand flowers bloom in its own garden. To regulators, this looks like fostering competition, not stifling it. It's the perfect defense wrapped in the perfect offense. And Google has receipts for this approach. They've spent decades contributing to open source, from Kubernetes to the foundational attention is all you need paper that literally enabled the transformer architecture underlying modern large language models. In addition, Google recently published an open source protocol called Agent to Agent for communication between AI agents. The company acknowledges that their explicit choice to be open means companies can use Google's technology to build competitors. That's not surprising because even if you build a competitor on Google's stack, you're still dependent on Google's infrastructure. You're still paying Google. You're still part of Google's ecosystem. This is the beautiful, almost terrifying elegance of Google's play. They don't need to own the AI companies of the future. They just need to be essential to them. They don't need to control the models that will transform medicine, climate science, biotech, or whatever comes next. They just need to power them. And right now, while OpenAI and NVIDIA celebrate their partnership, and while Microsoft and Amazon fight over established players, Google is quietly becoming the indispensable foundation of the entire AI economy. So the next time you read about another multi-billion dollar AI partnership, ask yourself, whose infrastructure is powering it? Whose chips are training those models? Whose cloud platform is hosting the data? Chances are, somewhere in that stack, there's a layer with Google's name on it. And that's exactly how they planned it. The question isn't whether Google will be a winner in the AI revolution. The question is whether anyone else can win without them. And right now, the answer is looking increasingly like no. That's not just smart strategy. That's checkmate in slow motion. Can Google's rivals catch up? How did they even let this happen? With Google so deeply embedded in our AI ecosystem, what does the company plan to do next? Drop a comment below and don't forget to subscribe for more AI insights.